Hello once again, cats and kittens, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Monkey Boy Presents, the DC Comics Superhero Collection, and today I'm happy to bring you the next issue in the Blackest Night, Brightest Day subseries, issue number 12, Jade. And this is another Green Lantern, the second Green Lantern to be represented in this collection. The first, of course, was Ganthet. She's a really cool character, a favorite of mine, but then I like pretty much all of the different Green Lantern characters. To my knowledge, she has not appeared anywhere outside of the world of the DC comic books. So we're going to dive right into her magazine first, which will tell you everything you need to know about the character of Jade, also known as Jennifer Lynn Hayden, the daughter of the original Golden Age Green Lantern, Alan Scott. And then we'll take a look at the figure itself, covering the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's just an okay figure, unfortunately. Uh, I'm, I'm very torn about this one, and uh, anxious for you guys to hear what I think about her. So I hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy. Issue number 12 of the DC Comics Blackest Night, Brightest Day subseries collection by Eagle Moss, Jade. First up, the character section. Where we meet Jennifer Lynn Hayden an ordinary young woman who had just started her first year in college. She had very supportive parents and did well in school, but otherwise had a very typical life. That is, until not long after her 19th birthday, when a star-shaped birthmark on the inside of her left palm suddenly began to glow with energy, turning her hair and skin green. Confronting her parents with it, they were forced to admit that she had been adopted, and they really had no idea where these strange new powers she suddenly displayed came from. eventually discovered that she had a twin brother. His name was Todd Rice, but he took the code name Obsidian because, like his sister, he had powers that allowed him to control Shadow Man. The two eventually tracked down their father, who was revealed to be the Golden Age Green Lantern, Alan Scott. Scott had absolutely no idea that he had children at all, and the trio eventually learned that his one-time girlfriend, a woman named Rose had become pregnant and left before telling him because Rose suffered from a split personality disorder and feared that at any moment she would become one of his deadliest villains, the evil Thor. Jade eventually grew tired of the superhero lifestyle and briefly became a model and actress. Soon she moved to New York to pursue a career as a professional photographer, where she moved in with and became very close friends with Kyle Rayner, the current Green Lantern. There was also a time when the Starheart, the emerald meteorite that had given Alan Scott his powers, became sentient and actually stripped Jade of hers, making her a normal human being except for the green hair and skin. Kyle Rayner soon came into possession of a second Green Lantern power ring which he eagerly gave to Jade, making her the first member of his new core. She also became a part-time member of the Justice League, serving as the Green Lantern when Kyle was called away into deep space. Kyle eventually became known as Ion, the most powerful Green Lantern in the known universe, and was able to give Jade back her original Starheart powers. The couple were also engaged to be married, but unfortunately, stresses of the superhero lifestyle caused them to drift apart. Oh. 
During the event known as Infinite Crisis, the evil Alexander Luthor was sacrificing heroes in an attempt to reboot the multiverse. Jade, in an effort to stop his evil plan, sacrificed herself, saving the universe as she died in Kyle Rayner's arms. Not long after the Infinite Crisis, Blackest Night spread across the DC Universe, raising an evil undead army of zombified heroes and villains. This included Jade, who took delight in tormenting Kyle Rayner with visions of all the people who had died on his watch as Green Lantern. cores of the color spectrum united to stop the blackest night and usher in brightest day, which saw the resurrection of 12 heroes and villains who were given a second chance at life. This included Jade. She reunited with her twin brother Obsidian and also helped save her father Alan Scott from the evil influence of the sentient Starheart meteorite. stories from the Brightest Day event. This time we look at Green Lantern, Brightest Day. This story was called The New Guardians, and it managed to bring together the main players from all the other cores in the color spectrum. Hal Jordan, Atrocitus, Larflees, Star Sapphire, Saint Walker, Sinestro, and Indigo One all joined together to form this new team called the New Guardians. There's of course a big, epic, overarching storyline, but some of the issues focus on a single member of the New Guardians. There's one issue where we learn all about Atrocitus' history, another one where we find out more about Indigo One and the Indigo Tribe. We also see a lot of other villains and heroes from the DCU, like Hector Hammond, and Lobo. Parallax also makes a return in an issue where he takes over the recently resurrected Barry Allen, The Flash. It's extremely well illustrated, very well written, and it also paved the way for the following storyline, which was known as The War of the Green Lanterns. The iconography section continues its theme of death and resurrection, this time looking at the recently resurrected hero, Green Arrow. It opens with his death, where we discover that he sacrifices himself in order to save Metropolis from a bomb that's supposed to be dropped on the city. Years later in the storyline known as Quiver, we see Ali resurrected. It's discovered that Hal Jordan, just before he sacrificed himself to reignite the sun as Parallax, used his incredible powers to bring Ali back from the dead. Finally, Jade's Friends and Foes section features her teammate on the Green Lantern Corps, Sorenek Natu, the Indigo Tribe version of the Atom, and the evil Sinestro Corps member, Superboy Prime. And here we have Jade, also known as Jennifer Lynn Hayden, and this is the first disappointing figure in the Blackest Night, Brightest Day subseries collection for me, and it's so unfortunate because I love this character. I love her in the comic books. She's a great, great heroine, and it's so sad that she's so poorly represented in this line. She should have been so much more. Um, it, this character, this figure, falls into the same category for me as the Legion of Superhero or Legion of Superhero figures from the regular Eagle Moss collection. Just underwhelming, really bland. I don't necessarily dig this costume. I mean, it's nice, but I don't think they portrayed it accurately here. 
the white is way too muted, the black is not glossy enough, even her green skin tone I have a bit of an issue with. As nice as it is and as cleanly painted as she is, there are just a lot of bad things about this figure. But she is hand painted, I do like that. And the sculpting is really, really nice, especially the facial sculpt. She's very attractive. The face, the hair, and all the painting that goes on there is really pulled off nicely. I mean, she is a model, so she should look pretty good. I also like the base and the pose, as I said, the way she's flying off that base, which is something we've seen with previous lanterns, but not quite like this one. I like that wave of energy that they have, like a flame, sort of, which goes with her powers nicely. Uh, just oh, underwhelming. It's so disappointing. Uh, you know, not not awful, just not spectacular, and it definitely hinders my recommendation of this figure. It's a hard one to recommend for everybody, just because she is sort of boring to look at. But we'll talk a little bit more about what I do like and what I don't like in the next section in just a moment. Jade hovers above the Green Lantern logo, and the underside of her base features her name and serial number. And to give you a sense of size and scale, here she is next to her father, the Golden Age Green Lantern, Alan Scott. Alongside her one-time boyfriend and fellow Green Lantern, Kyle Rayner. Alongside all the other Green Lanterns that have been released as part of the Eagle Moss collections. And finally, a group shot alongside the other core members in the color spectrum. Jade is a very mixed bag for me. I can't help but compare her to the Legion of Superhero characters because she sort of sits in that same category of I love the character, I'm just not crazy about what Eagle Moss did with the figure here. But we'll begin, as always, with the good, which will be pretty short, unfortunately. Uh, the paint is very clean. She's also completely hand-painted. I do like the sculpt on her, especially the facial sculpt, the head sculpt. And the pose is really nice. I like the flying characters, what can I say? I know it's a little bit redundant, we've had quite a few characters that are hovering or flying, but hers at least looks really unique, and of course you can notice that at first way down at the base there with the flaming sort of energy coming off of her feet. It's really nicely done, great sculpt, it looks like fire which is hard to pull off, and the paint is awesome. There's this great swirling of a neon green, almost a lime green, and this white, so it looks like energy, like it's glowing from within. Really well done. Unfortunately, that's about the best paint on her. <laughs> um, the white on the boots and the whole costume really is just too hot. It's too bright. There's not nearly enough shadowing and shading, and I wish it was more pearlescent like the White Lantern Sinestro before her. The same thing goes for the black section of the costume, which again is really well sculpted. She's very nicely sculpted, but unfortunately, the lack of shadowing and shading, you just can't see it. Her abs are nicely done. Uh, her arms are nicely done. I like the open palm on the uh, left hand. All the fingers are molded, sculpted, and again, the white glove would have, been, would have benefited from some shadowing and shading, or at least more pearlescence. Her back is nicely toned. Her muscles are defined. I like how you can see the green of her skin, but even her skin color is just not quite right for me. Uh, her right hand is the closed fist, but again, all the digits are there. They're sculpted and molded, and her forearms, they're not super buff, but there is some tone there, which again, it's a great sculpt. The emblem on her chest is hand-painted, even though I have an issue with it, and I love the high collar around her neck. It does a great job of making her neck look slim, uh, as a, a woman's neck normally would. And finally, the head sculpt really fantastic. She looks cute, she looks pretty, she's a model, so she should look pretty sexy. The coloration is nice. Again, the skin tone's not quite right for me, though. I wish she was more of an emerald green. But the hair is really fantastic. Great highlights all through that. And she looks pretty. The makeup is nicely done. Her eyes are nicely done. No crossed eyes or anything. Love the greenish uh, of her lips. And again, overall, the facial sculpt is really nice. On to the bad, which is almost as long as the good. The colors on the figure, both the costume and her skin tone, are wrong. I wish her skin was a hotter green, a more jade type of green than this milky mint green they went for. Also the costume, I wish the white had pearl essence to it and better shadowing and shading. The black was more glossy than it is. And the emblem on her chest, while it is hand painted, it's not quite right. It's just, it's just wrong. I mean, it's like they forgot to put 
the black lines around those green dots. It should look almost like an atomic logo. Go back and look at the magazine, you'll see. Finally, her open left hand, the palm of her hand, I feel they should have had either the green star tattoo on the hand or a, just a glowing energy coming off of it, since that's where her powers are derived. It's a missed opportunity, especially since she doesn't wear a green lantern ring. Finally, the ugly. She is most fragile in both of her arms because they are so thin with the one up and extended. If she should fall, that will break. Also at the base because she is only connected at that bit of energy that she's launching off the base from. Otherwise, she's pretty solid. Overall, this is the first figure in the Blackest Night, Brightest Day subseries collection that I have truly been disappointed in. She is a missed opportunity. She's bordering on being a good figure, but there's just so many mistakes. The skin tone, the colors of the costume, the emblem not being quite right on her chest, the fact that her hand isn't glowing, things that are simple that they really missed out on. I don't know if it was laziness or they just overlooked it or they just thought that this was good enough, I'm not sure, but she is sort of disappointing and I really love this character. It bothers me to say that. I like having her with the other members in the Green Lantern Corps. It's very cool to have her there. She's the first female Green Lantern represented in the series, which is another reason why it's so sort of disappointing that she isn't better. Um, but believe it or not, she's not the worst in this collection. If you know her and you like her, and you're a devoted Green Lantern fan like I am, go get her, pick her up, add her to the collection. She's not that expensive, she's pretty easy to find, and I do like her. I just, I want to love her, and there are too many problems, so if you aren't familiar with her, I think you should just skip her over, forget she ever happened, and move on to other, better figures in the collection. And I hope you have enjoyed my review of Jade, a character I really love, and it's so disappointing that this figure isn't just a little bit nicer than it is. Please stay tuned for a quick teaser trailer of the next figure in the series, diving back into the regular Eagle Moss collection with another member of the Bat family and a different version of a character that we have already covered in a previous issue. Another female as well, which is always exciting to have another heroine to add. Please stay tuned. As always, I am your host, the Monkey Boy, aka J to his friends. Thanks very much for watching.